Hi guys, welcome back. So you guys should have just completed the table using the handbook of land and water to help you answer about how small changes can lead up to a bigger change. So really quick, we're just gonna discuss the following question. What evidence from the book supports the idea that small changes can add up to a big change that is easy to notice? So I want you to go ahead and pause this video and just answer this question using what you already know from the book. You can write it in your packet, talk to somebody at home, or think about it in your head. So when I'm thinking about the book, um, when I'm thinking about those small changes, I'm thinking about those tiny pieces of rock eroding from a mountain and flowing into the ocean and then the waves are carrying these tiny pieces of rock to the shore. So I'm not gonna notice a few extra pieces of sand on the shore, um, but as this happens more and more, over time more sand is going to get deposited onto the shore, and then it's going to eventually make the shore smaller. So that is a bigger change that is more easy to notice. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to activity two, which is writing about change. So in your packets, you have these two questions, and we're going to work on answering these questions based on what we've learned about change already. So let's read through the questions together. So question one says, when one small piece of rock erodes from a landform, would you notice a change to the landform? Why or why not? The second question asks, how can erosion cause a big change to a landform? So I want you guys to just pause the video and answer these two questions in your packet. Um, if you do not have a packet, then you can just talk to somebody at home or just pause the video and think about how you would answer that question. Okay, so we're going to discuss some of the responses to the questions right now. So question one, when one small piece of rock erodes from a landform, would you notice a change to the landform? Why or why not? So if I think back to the mountain model where we use the cotton balls, um, we did not notice when we took just one or two cotton balls off of that plate. So that kind of also leads me to think that one small piece of rock coming off of a mountain is not going to be a noticeable change because it's something that's really small. And also we remember that it takes a lot of time for that to happen too. So um, that is why I would probably not notice a small piece of rock eroding off of a landform. The second question is, how can erosion cause a big change to a landform? So over time, um, these smaller changes are going to add up to a bigger, more noticeable change. So for example, um, with the mountain model, as we were taking off a cotton ball, when we took one or two pieces off, we didn't notice it. But if we took 20 or 30 ball cotton balls off of that plate, it would be a much more noticeable change. So again, that's just going to show how small changes can add up to a bigger change that's more noticeable. Um, also, if we're thinking back to our beach example, uh, again, if we had just a few pieces of sand washing onto the shore, we probably would not notice that. But over time, as more sand deposits onto that shore, it's going to make the shore smaller, and that's going to be a change that we will actually be able to notice. So the key concept that we've learned from this chapter is that many small changes that are hard to notice can add up to a bigger change that is easy to notice. We've also been thinking about scale as how big or small something is. Geologists think about erosion at different scales when tiny pieces of rock cause a big change to a landform. Geologists also think about erosion at different scales when they think about how fast or slow erosion occurs. Okay, so that is the end of lesson three. So we will see you guys back for our very last lesson for this chapter.